Gruesome Magazine. Hello, once again, I'm your host, Doc Rotten, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-host, Jeff Moore, Dave Dreher, Christopher G. Moore, and I will take a look at very spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we review What Josiah Saw, streaming on Shudder. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, sir, how are you doing? <laughs> I usually don't even know what I saw, let alone what <laughs> I Everything. What did I just seen... see? I don't know. Yeah. Everything's in question. Everything's in question. All right. Also joining us is award-winning filmmaker, Christopher G. Moore. How are you doing, sir? What's up? I just want to say I never want to have Robert Patrick as my dad, mm. uh, especially after Peacemaker or this film. <laughs> so. Yep. No, he, he's definitely convincing in that role uh, we'll yeah. put it that way all right rounding out the crew tonight is the one and only Dave Dreher how you doing sir you know I think the real burning question is just because Josiah saw it does that mean we had to yeah <laughs> uh, I don't know I think we need uh, I think we need to uh get into that conversation we we do need to get into it and regardless <laughs> we saw it we saw what Josiah saw yeah it was it's all been seen we saw it all right. It. We're here to talk yeah, about we did. There ain't no uh, one seeing it. Uh, <laughs> come on! Very uh, the lead. All right, what we're reviewing tonight is what Josiah saw streaming on Shutter. We're going to give our first impressions. That will be spoiler-free. Then we'll dive into a discussion. We will get into spoilers. There's a few twists in here, or twist wannabes. And then we'll wrap things up with... Our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. And we hope you enjoy not only this review, but many others that we have on the site. And if you do, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, or share with a friend. It will do wonders for us and help us grow and find more of you. And that'll be wonderful. Um, of course, we want to hear your comments down below. Let's just dive into this. Let's start off with the card. What Josiah Saul, 2022, streaming on Cheddar, uh, beginning August 4th, 2022. Directed by Vincent Cragshaw, and the writer is Robert Allen Dills. The cast includes Robert Patrick, Nick Stahl, Scott Hayes, Kelly Gardner, Tony Hale, Jake Weber, and Ronnie Jean Blevins. Snops is a family with buried secrets reunite at a farmhouse after two decades to pay for their past sins. And that they do. <laughs> and Indeed that they do. They do. All right. Let's start off with Dave Dreyer. What was your first impression hey! of what Josiah saw? Well, my first impression was that uh, we got Robert Patrick, who was in Terminator 2, and Nick Stahl, who was in Terminator 3. Uh, so it was like a little bit of a Terminator reunion going on here, which I thought was kind Very of, it, good. yeah, it was, it was kind of unusual. Uh, you, you know, this is just a really dark, heavy movie. I actually enjoyed uh, a couple of the performances uh, in this, but the, the material, the, you know, what's going on here is just so depressing and horrible. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you can really say you, you like this movie. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, sometimes family sucks, and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, I I'm still a little on the fence with this because I really do think some of the performances were pretty top notch, but I really dislike the story. Mm. Well, the story's a big thing, so if you dislike yeah. that, yeah, okay. Well, this will be an interesting discussion, Dave. All right, Jeff Marser, what was your first impression of what Josiah saw? Yeah, I have to question my use of the word enjoyed i guess but i I, <laughs> I liked it i don't know exactly what the hell happened but i liked it there's so much going on with this family and so much unspoken and so much lack of communication uh and hidden secrets and motivations that i found it interesting and i like the way it's broken into three acts uh and maybe we could talk about that later but i i particularly enjoyed the middle act mm, um, yes. uh, at any rate i enjoyed it 
So you enjoyed it, or I liked it. Maybe I like. Yeah, it. I was gonna say it's hard to say you enjoyed it, right? Uh, well, I enjoyed it. Depends, you know? depends, yeah, there's more than one definition. All right. It's yeah. Wacky, yeah. Fair enough. Wacky. Fair enough. <laughs> Christopher G. Moore, sir, what was your first impression of Christopher what? scowling already? Look, he's already scowling. I know. <laughs> uh, I didn't enjoy this. I tolerated it. I don't ah. say that much. <laughs> I, I didn't like this movie at all. Oh no! I, I think it's um, it it, it it's like it it it's parts trying to be Pulp Fiction, it's parts Sling Blade meets Six Sense. It's it's got it's it's just got so many different crazy elements that that makes you a little bit confused because you have all these little segments that are supposed to sort of connect at some point, but I don't know. There there are points where I watch certain films and. Maybe it's just the content of it is so dreary and dark and to where there's no sense of hope or light to anything that it kind of just turns me off to what's happening. And I mean, there's a, there's probably, I mean, there's probably like one moment I enjoyed for the cinematography, but overall I hated the characters. And then there's just moments that just felt like, Oh, it's like, this is my, Tarantino monologue thing. We're going to use old timey historical footage and stuff like that. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so I don't know. It, 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 I mean, I don't know. I, 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 this is the kind of thing I felt like I needed like a tetanus shot after watching it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so dreary and you're just, you're, you're in this sort of sunken place of, of, of dark, and twistedness when it comes to this sort of disjointed family and and all the the uh, the the sins and things that happened in it that sort of are revealed throughout. Um, and the I, there's just you just you can't. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't like any any of the characters. I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's like it's it, you have to pick like the you just have to pick the the you know, the least, well, I don't know, like, well, just, they're all unlikable characters. No, to they are. So where I, I don't, I, I just maybe even like to, there's even point where like, there's like a sheriff character. I just felt like, I just felt like something was weird about him. It's just, everybody just seems like horrible people or, and, and so I don't know. It, it Yeah. It's like, I don't know what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Other than well, they grew up I in just, such a supportive family. And yeah, they did. And well, yeah, yeah. And, yeah <laughs> well, and, yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's like, and maybe some people are into that or whatever. And you might, and he might be triggered if you've had a horrible things happen in your family. I'm just saying. But overall, I, I just, I, I, to me, there's. N Other than maybe the cinematography in a few places, there's really nothing enjoyable in this film, and it it just felt. I don't know. It, this film was not made for me. I'll just say that much. Yeah, not made for you. It, yeah, it, it, it's a certain type of movie you you have to walk into and be ready for. I think um, I I found it much better than I think the three of you are giving it. You know, uh, giving I, I was going to say give it credit for, but that's not the words I want to say. It was just words that came to my mind. Um, it I thought the the acting was fantastic. I thought the characters were richly flawed. It was this you know, this challenging story about this family trying to, you know, reunite and there was no good reason for them to reunite. And, um, you know, the motivations are all, you know, <laughs> either, either motivated by greed or some weird past motivation that, you know, comes to light. Uh, it's not perfect by any means. And I, and it's also, I thought predictable about what the twist was going to be. And, but at the same time, I, 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 I like the chapters of it. And I would say there's, they only do three, but there's technically four because you get each, each child and then the reunion. Uh, and, but in the end, I, I found it captivating. Uh, yeah. I, and I, I think it's mostly because of the, the performances and I, they were just so, so dysfunctional and, 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 you know, <laughs> it was, I don't know. I was fascinated by it. Um, but no, it is, it is definitely not a feel good movie of the year. That is for sure. It is deeply dour and. Yeah. And, and, and there's a moment where it's 
dad son time that is one of the most uncomfortable things oh that I've is so yeah true. that was i was like In a what while. The... yeah yeah, yeah that, that was that had to be uncomfortable to film i can't mm -hmm. imagine as actors or even people filming it what's my motivation I, well i don't <laughs> I, I don't what's know. Weird is, I don't know. <laughs> what's, what's weird is they sold it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, I, totally well, I mean, obviously, it. it was meant to be incredibly uncomfortable, and it oh, yeah. absolutely was. And if it's in, you know, a certain context of the story, it's. I don't know. I don't know if that. I don't know what to say about that. But let's go ahead and dive into this. Let's get. We're going to get into some spoilers. Um, there's really not, but one spoiler. It, well, there's there's plenty. Actually, there's three good spoilers in this, but. You're, they're telegraphed. I don't think anybody. I think our audience is very smart, and they're going to recognize what <laughs> what the condition is in this. Right, right. Um, where, where things are heading. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't. I don't know why, but when they when uh, when uh, Pa and Tommy drove into town, I knew. Yeah, and I, I did. I too. don't really know why, but that was when it just went. Wait a minute. Yeah. So, that's that's exactly when I figured it out too. That was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I but I did the story for me picked up with the um, Nick Stahl, you know, when it switched over to his character, um, and it it's just I don't know. It it did feel kind of Tarantino in that structure, but it's not necessarily nonlinear either, right? It's just shifting focus from one sibling to another. Yeah. Cause it, cause, I mean, I, kinda, I, I got confused a bit when they, went, <coughs> when they jumped from the house to the Nick Stall character. It took. I was like, "Where am I? What's going on?" Yeah. That, <laughs> why, why am I? Why, why am I here now? I don't understand what's happening. Well, even um, even when we jump to the the couple segment as well, it's like they're totally they feel so separate, you know, in the beginning. Yeah. So. Well, they had mentioned Eli, but I don't remember mentioning the daughter at all. Uh, you know, they didn't really say anything about Mary, right? Um, mm -hmm. Until the headlines came. But it, I, to me, it came together pretty quick. Um, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't confused for very long. Yeah, same way here. I mean, I, I was like, oh, okay, okay. I, I see what's going on now. Yeah. Well, and I like what you said, Doc, about how they were, they, this family uh, has a reunion that never should have happened. or they could... <laughs> Never, never. And it, and it never would have. Except for, um, basically, uh, Eli was the, you know, the reason behind it is, is the letter, but Eli is the one that pushes it. It doesn't, doesn't seem like Mary would have done it at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Yep. And Thomas wasn't in, you know, in any shape to do it either. So. That was no, all. he wasn't. No, but Eli was definitely motivated by greed. He needed the money for yeah, various yeah. reasons, and it, it, yeah, to me that it, it, the story made sense in that respect. You yeah. know, based on their flaws, and and are they likable, Christopher? No, they are. They are <laughs> the farthest from it. Uh, but I don't know. Does every story have to have likable characters? We tend to think that. We tend to talk about that. Yeah, but the, I mean, there's certain movies where you have unlikable characters and you still enjoy them. You still enjoy the movie, you know, despite them being unlikable characters. But I think at some point when everything is so unlikable, <laughs> you, you just feel like you're you're you, you've you've drudged into the you've you've gone from the pool into the sewer. <laughs> and it, and yeah. there was really nothing redeeming about any of these people. Even when they try to do something redeeming, it doesn't feel yeah, right. it, it, like it, I mean, like yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I mean, and I don't know if when Eli, when Eli saves the girl. Yeah, then... he saves the girl. I mean, it's perfectly innocent. He, I mean, well, except for, you know, the surroundings of how he came about. So, but, you know, he's not, he's not the despicable one in that instance. He's actually the hero, but the world is never going to see it that way. And yeah, even, even the way he, shit. you know, because <laughs> he walks in without, you know, he just uh, makes all these bad decisions. Well, with and, all the, <laughs> all the backgrounds too, it makes you wonder. He he leaves her off with the sheriff, but but I'm thinking that may not be the safest place. Well, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Because even well, the, the sheriff, sheriff. Did, like I felt like he was going to do something bad to her, and I was like, 
Oh, I don't. I feel uncomfortable at this. I, I think. I think the only element of humor they they tried to throw in there was when the guy gave him the, the extra shirt, sort of from the wet t-shirt contest with yeah. titties on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and that was probably the only element of. But at the same time, I still very felt very weird about it because he he just found found. <laughs> you know teeth from from the holocaust i'm like oh mm. i mean there's i don't know there's just so many despicable elements of this where i just felt like oh i felt like i, I was entrenched in it i did like jake weber's character boone you yeah know, and he and yeah, he has this like you know and, and he it's his his well, it's not an arc but the end of his story i was so satisfied by that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was the greatest scene. <laughs> it's just like thump. <laughs> and well, the fact that he told her, you know, don't touch that. Don't touch that. And the fact that we're talking about uh gypsy gold on the heels of uh doing the curse last week with the silver mm. that uh, anyway. Yeah. And this the... gold came from it wasn't the 30 pieces of silver, but it came from another all oh, the teeth. Oh my gosh. Not good place. So anyway, yeah. uh I enjoyed it. I'm with Doc in that I thought uh I thought Robert Patrick was awesome. I I loved every second he was on the screen. He was such a He I thought he was dick. powerful. I thought he was uh, great. He's just he's like developed a really disturbing look as he's aged. I mean, you would not it's hard to believe that's the same guy from Terminator 2. It I mean, it barely right, looks like right. him, but he's just a very disturbed looking man. <laughs> he's, he's, he's kind of frightening to look at. He is, but he's incredibly talented. Well, yeah. I mean, he, if you watch the Peacemaker series, he plays a really great role in that, playing sort of like an asshole father. Mm-hmm. And that, that seems <laughs> yeah, to be I'm his awesome. niche now. <laughs> it seems to be his niche. You know, he used to be, you know, he had a hard time finding jobs after Terminator 2 because <laughs> everybody just saw him as the Terminator. Uh, and so. Now he's just probably just getting all these roles where he's just a, oh, he's a jerk to people. Of roles and <laughs> TV series and uh, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and I thought Nick Stahl was pretty good too. I thought he really embodied that character almost, almost to the point that you know, I was like, "Oh God, dude!" Yeah, wheel yeah. it back well, a little bit. Wheel it back. <laughs> it's too far. Too far. <laughs> Every time he met up with somebody, they go. Wow, you look rough, you know. <laughs> you look like a human road heart. And he, he did. did. He, and he did. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about the twist. And you you said you noticed it, Jeff, at, you know, at the time when they went to town. Christopher, was it a surprise for you? No. No. Did you I mean I, I you, you just you sort of look at things and you're like, oh, well, I don't want to say give it away, but yeah, you just sort of you notice people. Uh, yes. Y- y- you just notice it. Yep. You know, you, you sort of pay attention to things, and at some point, you realize, oh, okay, something something's off here, and and there's a reason why it's off. You know, and so, mm-hmm. uh, and then then I think the only thing is trying to find out if it's one of those if it's a if it's a supernatural thing or if it's a mental thing, yeah, you know, yeah. I think that's the only question that you might have mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, towards exactly. the end. And so. it, we, it is one it, of those ones you don't know for sure. Right? And it, it yeah. could still be both. <laughs> it could still be both. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's either fight club or sixth sense. So, yeah, so you sort of... Oh man. I, I'm not sure it's not both. Uh, Cause there was definitely, you know, one to, I thought the, the one line that they say, you know, that I'll handle Paul. Right when they said they're going back into the house, and he goes, "I'll handle Paul." You know, it, it kind of it, it it was there to weave some doubt into what we were thinking at that time. Didn't work, but it was there to do it. It was made me curious, like, what does that mean? <laughs> but Dave, what I what about you? Um, what do you think? Is it supernatural? Is it is it Fight Club? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm leaning more towards the, the mental. Uh, the mental aspect. I don't think there was anything. I mean, I don't think there was anything supernatural going on. I think it was uh, definitely a uh, a mental issue. In my, I mean, that's how I perceived it. Well, they when when Mary explained his past, which I thought was really well done, it, it totally like lit his whole personality up. I right. Thought. 
Um, yeah, it, it it certainly leaned it in that direction. What about what about the gypsy with the fortune telling? Yeah, she so was creepy. creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was creepy. And, uh, again, it just kind of made me uncomfortable. Mm. I'm not sure I 100 percent understood, you know, why what? that was happening. I but, don't know, but, I liked but it, it was, it. but it, it was, it, again, it was another one of those scenes. It was just kind of uncomfortable to sit through. When and she it, gave him the whatever was in the water, you know, you could call it a tea, tea I yeah. guess, but it was tea, pretty whatever, cool. yeah. And then, and then she goes, "This is the real show, stranger." <laughs> 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 and it took off from there. Well, uh, that, but that... you are, you are why she burns, you know. So she, you know, there was there was hints of what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what was coming up too, you know? So it, I felt like that part, that supernat, that was supernatural. I felt like because they shouldn't have. That that was uh, that hit home, I guess, to some of the stuff going on in the background that maybe we didn't know about yet. Um, Definitely. And and well, that was the his mother. Stuff. And yeah, sorry. Ties into the whole cursed gold stuff. That too. Yeah. With the supernatural. Yeah. Yeah, which goes back to Boone. Oh my God, that was that was precious. Well, and I will say that this, the cinematography during the whole, uh, being in the, the trailer part, mm -hmm. was my favorite part of the whole movie. Just how that shot, especially when he's looking through that that doorway and it's shot in slow motion and stuff. Mm, yeah. Oh I yes, the, the I love yeah. the cinematography in that. Although, I will say I'm wondering if at some point if we're going to see movies, you're going to get away from sort of like quote unquote gypsy stereotypes. Cause some people see that word as a sort of a curse word. So it'd be interesting to see if we, in the future, if we're going to see movies that portray, you know, people that are considered gypsies in that respect. So, well, I, I mean, it was, uh, I think it was Jake Weber Boone. He didn't start off calling them gypsies. He didn't, he start talking about the Romany and, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is the, the which is the, the in Germany and stuff like that. The so. Yeah, the gypsy term is more yeah. for the Romani people. Uh, but it, but it somewhere came down to stealing the gypsy gold. You know that mm -hmm. was what they talked about, and I, I you know I can I can see that I guess, but uh, I felt like that whole there were parts of this, and I it was that segment in there felt a little Cohen brother like to me. Mm, that's that's interesting. Um, just really weird a bunch of characters and a bunch of odd stuff going on and people saying weird stuff and going what the heck are you doing and why are you doing that you know um anyway <laughs> i i do like how <laughs> eli got out of that situation though it, it, i thought it was built up oh well yeah 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 for, yeah. for that yeah. happening because you knew and he also knew also yeah, knew yeah. that he was so big he was definitely going to fall check out yeah. <laughs> Well, that lady check, check had, off smack, right? Well, well I mean, yeah, because that lady, the the lady, the lady he had sex with, which is another wonderful scene. Uh, uh, she mentions like this will what knock a mule down or something like that. So it was already yeah, sort of something like, like an elephant the, or something. Yeah, yeah, knock, pretty well. Yeah, knock yeah. An elephant out or whatever. And so that yeah, that was the sort of the Chekhov's drug check out smack <laughs> all right well i think we've you know we've said a lot about this film uh so let's go ahead and wrap but you said that that oh, uh okay. oh, i'm sorry chris you said the only scene that really felt tarantino to me was was uh when eli and boone had the initial uh parlay i guess in, in the across the desk and eli pulls out that balloon and throws it on the desk and then you know boone does that did you just do, you know, Did you just throw a repeated that head? lines and <laughs> that bounce, just like Pulp Fiction or uh, Reservoir Dogs, where he's got people repeating lines, you know, for emphasis. Mm -hmm. Well, and I felt like the whole, the whole speech about the, you know, the gold and stuff felt like almost like the, like the watch monologue or any mm -hmm. type of long monologues where they talk about something like that. But yeah, I mean, and I think this, even though the structure is still very linear to some degree, individual parts felt like very Pulp Fictionist, you know, and 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 the, the underground of people that you meet when it comes to that. So that's the reason. But I do see the Cohen Brothers element as well. 
All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Let's give it our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. And that means, Dave Dreher, you're up first. Me first. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think Christopher kind of summed it up the best when he said he just kind of feel like you need to take a shower after you watch this movie. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, be, that's definitely true. kind of where you're at. But with that being said, I, I think there really is some great acting in this. I mean, it's a really – a good cast with Robert Pasek in this stall. And I, I thought that Kelly Garner was, was great as Mary, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, and uh, Jake Weber was, was fantastic as well. Uh, so a lot of great performances and just a story that's, that, that's grungy, <laughs> you know? So uh, again, I'm kind of like what you were saying, doc, I, 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 or I don't know if it was doc or uh, Jeff who said it, but hate to say you, I enjoyed it, but it did hold my attention. And I wanted to see where things were going. A lot of stuff is telegraphed, but um, still at the end of the day, it held my attention to the very end. So uh, I'm going to give it a three out of five. And uh, favorite scene, uh, the scene that sticks in my mind the most is that uh, confrontation at the end when they all come back to the house uh, and just the whole thing about uh, uh, how... Um, Thomas meets him out at the, and they all come in together and he's all excited and, you know, telling, uh, telling Josiah that, uh, you know, they're here and Mary looks better than she ever has. And he's just, he's just so excited. The whole family's back together. And, uh, you know, little do we know that everyone's world's going to come crashing down. <laughs> um, and I, I just thought that was really well put together. And then when the worm turns, it, it, it gets ugly and quick, but it all kind of happens in that one scene. It's like a little eight, nine minute scene where it all kind of goes to shit. So uh, I'm going to use that scene as my favorite. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Jeff Moore, you're up next. Well, I, for me, this is definitely worth a watch just for Robert Patrick. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would also agree that the other four, the other three key players were all really, really good. Um, I'm giving this, uh, I'm going a little more. I'm going to give this a 3.75. Nice. Um, and... My favorite scene, this will probably sound a little weird, but when uh, I think Mary is seeing uh, like, a, like a therapist or a psychiatrist or something. Or no, it's it's for adoption, I think. They're trying to yep. they ask her why she wants a child. And she gives this little speech about there's a hollow deep inside me and I can't ever fill it. Um, and it burrows deep inside me. Uh, and then come turns that back around and comes out with a with a positive out of that. But I I thought that was really I, I got goosebumps when she was talking about this hollow deep inside her and it was burrowed down deep and and uh, so other you know other than taking any scene that Robert Patrick is in, I'll pick that one. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Christopher, your uh, final thoughts, your score, your favorite scene. Uh. Although I enjoyed Robert Patrick, I'd, I'd rather watch him in Peacemaker. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it It's shot competently. It's got good, good performances. But I just, I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I did not enjoy this. And th there's a few moments, I think, um, that kind of work. But it's just, I don't know, it's so dire and, and twisted and dark and nasty and <laughs> and 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 a lot of it's a lot of it's implied you know they don't even but even the implication is like oh i just you gotta take like 10 showers and then scrub yourself down like you're in silkwood um but uh <laughs> there's some there, there's a well, deep uh, cut, yeah. there's a deep cut um it's all about that film in a long time i know i know um yeah and and <laughs> i'm just glad i'm just glad well I, i'm glad doc picks it i'm glad nobody picked uh, the masturbate with your dad day saying oh, um, no, i'm not going to pick that <laughs> yeah, okay. i'm not picking it either um but again that i i, ugh, ugh. <laughs> I just i was like I, I was sitting there i was like i can't believe i'm watching it if, i will say in the very beginning i was like is this a horror film or is this just a dark family drama i don't know what's going on here um I'm going to give it a 2.5. I'm not. Okay. It's better than I thought you were going to I, do. I, I'll give it halfway because it's, you know, it, it's not a horrible, it's not a horribly shot movie. It's, it's, it's got, it's, it's got, you know, but at the same time, I think just the subject matter, just in a way. Um, 
as for favorite scene, I kind of mentioned it earlier. I'll say the scene when, you know, she's with the, the, the fortune teller and then he's like all like drugged up and he's watched that door opens. The girl goes to the door in slow motion and you see everything happening and he's watching it, you know, and it kind of ends in a really fun way where it slams his head into the table. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love the cinematography in that scene. Um, that, that works really well. And that, that's the real stand out of it. And again, there's some really good cinematography. There's some really great shots of things, wide shots of things in this film. Um, so it's shot competently. I just, the subject matter is just too, ugh, too gross for me. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, that subject matter. It is, it's brutal subject matter. It is, it, it will, it will wear you down emotionally. Um, but the, for me, the, the characters themselves, um, you know, make it make it something to, to watch and and follow through with. Uh, the performances of those characters is even better. And like like I think Chris was right. There there are moments in this that are shot extraordinarily well. Um, and they, it, <laughs> I after that it's just really it's, it comes down to me for the performances. I was I was riveted. Um, it's not perfect. And there are moments that are like, I, you know, that whole scene, I could do without that whole scene, to be honest with you. I, I don't know if it really, I'm not really sure what, how it impacted the story either. Um, I think it was how Pot treated him. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe. Uh, but, it, you know, it didn't need it. it. It certainly would have sold it without it. Uh, but there it is. And it is disgusting and disturbing. Um. Yeah, so so to me, I, I want to give it a four. I want to give it a four, um, but it's really? not. Cool. But it's not going to end up. Here's the thing, though. This year is so good. It is it's so good that it it still does not have a chance of being in my top ten, even with a four. This year is we're only what seven in our se seven months, right? Just closing on our seventh month here, getting into our eighth, and. There's there's too much good stuff. <laughs> I mean, it, there is a lot of good things, and there's a lot of great things I'm looking forward to uh, after this too. So, um, I and but it's also a film I don't think I'll ever watch again. I don't I don't think I want to revisit this one. Once once is good. Thank you. <laughs> um, my favorite scene I I mentioned it two or three times was the boom scene when he gets the gold, and you know this character is is. He's kind of the, you know, the badass Qu Quentin Tarantino character, right? He's the guy that, um, you know, he's the he's the mob guy, right? He, not really. What well, kind of is? I'm not really sure. But anyway, he, the, you know, yeah. yeah. But then he gets he touches the gold and that's it. <laughs> I loved it. I thought that was great. Just the whole thing because he's getting ready to walk out the door and he goes thump. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh man, that or the shirt. I think Chris was right. The shirt, the whole shirt thing was funny. Yes. Yeah, the shirt, yes. the shirt thing was another one of those sort of uh, ironic Tarantino type yeah, yeah. things. Do you remember <laughs> Pulp Fiction when they had to wear the Hawaiian shirt or whatever those outfits? Yeah. With the shorts and everything. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. All right, well, there you go. That's our review for what Josiah saw it's streaming on Shutter. Check it out. We know you have Shutter, so the, unless you're, you know, triggered by family drama. Check this one out. If you're triggered by family drama, do not check this out. Unless you have a Robert Patrick daddy fetish. Oh. Or, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's go a little farther than family drama. Incest. Uh, well, that would uh, be the triggering. Yeah. And on that happy note. <laughs> Always great to end the episode with incest. I really, I really enjoyed watching that. Movie. All right. We got, oh my gosh. Jeff, Dave, Christopher, thank you for joining me. Thank you, of, I want to say it was a lot of fun. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun that we made it through in one piece. There you go. We survived. <laughs> All right. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>